get ready. Revenge of the Mummy the Ride was the first ever roller coaster to be opened at Universal Studios Florida and Universal Studios Hollywood. The roller coaster was stipulated to be the first ever psychological fear ride, playing on many primordial fears such as the dark, insects, speed, fire, and I suppose death as a whole. This has probably been our most requested entry in this series, so it's about time we finally talked about it. The Mummy, starring Brendan Fraser and Rachel Wise, was released to audiences on the 7th of May 1999. The film was a box office smash and became a summer blockbuster, grossing over $400 million, which would roughly translate to around $650 million in today's money. A sequel followed in 2001, with The Mummy Returns proving just as successful at the box office as the original. For any film studio looking to spruce up their theme park offerings, an all-new attraction based on the franchise made perfect business sense. Tying a popular blockbuster into a theme park attraction isn't exactly new for Universal though, but there are several specific points which make this a good ride, which we will hopefully unpack in today's video. Get ready. The Story A good story is an integral part of any proper theme park attraction. Without this, a ride is just a unilateral experience, compounded by the inability to partake in any sort of adjacent lore on the rider's behalf. This often results in a simplified ride with little interaction. Revenge of the Mummy, however, is obviously based on a story, but not just a story presented in the film franchise. Instead, Universal opted for an almost self-aware or meta-story arc that puts riders on the set of a fictional sequel. The concept of movie production is not exactly groundbreaking for Universal Parks. I mean, the park's tagline was specifically ride the movies for a number of years, and some of its attractions often showed a behind-the-scenes look into many of the studio's productions. However, the ride takes this concept and elaborates on it, with an overlap of the story portrayed in the franchise into the real-world setting of the film's production. The pre-show provides us with some backstory, outlining that the curse portrayed in the original film was indeed actually real. During filming, there were a number of unfortunate accidents that plagued the cast and crew. Of course, Brendan Fraser being the birdie man's man that he is, disregards the curse. Crew members have been advised to wear a symbol of the Magi on a necklace to protect them. Brendan refused to and has subsequently refused the coffee from on-site catering. He steals a crew member's necklace in order to obtain his coffee. Reggie, now no longer in possession of his Magi symbol, suffers a freak accident later in the video and is trapped inside a sarcophagus prop. This elaborate setup is a clever and creative use of source material, developing on the themes and story of the film, but also helping put you into the set. We, in turn, are active agents in the story around us. It's also comedic and lighthearted, which is a stark contrast from the dark and psychological terror that the ride actually wants to invoke. This is also excellently detailed in your surroundings, as you walk up to the building are the Museum of Antiquities and the intricate queue line that's found inside. There are some differences found in both the queue and ride depending on which park you visit. So for the purposes of this video, we're specifically going to discuss the one found in Universal Studios Florida. The queue. From the facade of the show building, unassuming guests would anticipate that this ride takes place in some form of museum. But as we've seen from the story, this is a soundstage purposely built to house the production of the new Mummy sequel. The film's props, moulds and concept drawings are found inside, giving riders interesting artefacts to look at while passing time in line. However, as you progress further into the queue, the general atmosphere and ambiance changes. The lighting gets darker and the scenery begins to decay. You are now making your way through a detailed recreation of an Egyptian tomb, fashioned as if it's from some early 20th century archaeological dig site. This is a perfect example of how the physical surroundings of an attraction add to not only the story being portrayed, but the overall experience and atmosphere of the ride. In a way, this acts similarly to the ever foreboding and adventurous queue line we discussed in our Indiana Jones adventure installment in this series. The mounting sense of dread is further added with interactive features in the queue. At one point, guests further in line come across a monitor playing CCTV footage from a portion of the queue from before. A touch point in the console illuminates blue and when it's touched, a blast of air is emitted into the queue area shown on screen. This allows guests to enhance the fear in line by scaring others. Another section has two hand imprints on a replica pyramid. If guests hold down two hands as marked for 10 seconds, an audio cue will play and a glowing Magi symbol will appear in the ceiling as a sign of protection. Lastly, at one point, a holographic artifact appears in a small hole in the queue's wall. Guests can dare themselves and others to reach in and grab the artifact, only to experience an intense burst of air that will send unexpected hands retreating from the wall. This one almost acts like a rite of passage for many riders, although I'm sure still to this day, avid fans of the ride that know about this gag still probably haven't put their hand in. These interactive features all embellish the story, serving in an interesting and unique queue experience that entertains, but also adds to the ominous tone of the ride. In a way, it almost feels like a haunted house walkthrough attraction, which the movie director and ride designer Stephen Summers is apparently a big fan of. 
the dark right. One of the main reasons we think this ride is so good is its hybrid nature. It's a prominent theme throughout this series that roller coasters that deploy dark ride elements make for some interesting and fun rides. The ride starts off in this way, with a traditional dark ride setting in a very literal sense. As guests leave the station, they round the corner and are greeted by an impressive 6 foot 8, 650 pound Imhotep animatronic who interrupts the mummified Reggie from the pre-show, attempting to warn us in a very quotable manner that the curse is real. Imhotep is here to harvest our souls so we can rule for eternity. As we round another corner, we enter a dimly lit chamber filled with treasure on either side of the track. The overall set design here is very admirable, with plenty to look at and a lot of detail placed, showing care has gone into this ride. Imhotep, in a cool sand projection form, advises that we can serve him and receive riches, which illuminates the tomb, highlighting the gold and treasure that lines the walls, or we can reject the offer and savour a more bitter treasure. When this is ushered, terrifying soldier mummies pop up from either side of the track in front of the treasures. There's a choice to be made here, although we are sent further creeping through the tomb at a controlled speed. The ride uses linear induction motors to send a steady current to the cars, which essentially acts as a reverse magnet moving the car along the track. This steady flow of energy keeps guests moving further into the darkness and the unknown of what lies ahead beyond this tomb. Despite being offered a choice, we don't actually have any agency to decide the outcome. We are helpless in this moment, having already made the choice to enter the ride vehicle, and now we have to live with the consequences. The creeping car that passes through the tomb becomes a potential carriage to our death. The Roller Coaster as the cars leave the tomb, riders enter a dark passageway. This is where the concept of primordial fears begins to play a part. As briefly mentioned earlier, Revenge of the Mummy was created as a psychological thrill ride that targets our primal fears. These are fears that are said to be deep-rooted in our internal psyche. They are the core tenets of what helps us survive, tracing back to when humans were just another creature found within the food chain. These fears are said to be beyond our control, that regardless of the context, they still tap into our subconscious and evoke some sort of psychological or visceral reaction. This dark passageway introduces us to our inner lygophobia, or the fear of the dark. An illuminated wall is in front of us as our car runs towards us. As we crash into the wall, the car pauses and projected scarab beetles pour out from a hole. This visual further plays into the second primal fear, entomophobia, or the fear of insects. For those that are particularly squeamish, this is a jarring visual that will make your skin itch. But before you can even reach down to scratch your legs, the car rushes backwards down a drop into darkness. When the car comes to a halt, Imhotep appears on a screen. The surface that the car is stopped on is actually a turntable. The car then spins 180 degrees, following the moving Imhotep on a circular screen around the room. The car then slowly begins to ascend the hill. As Imhotep exclaims that our souls are his, the car begins to launch up the remainder of the hill at an ever-increasing speed. Again, the use of linear induction motors is used here, although this time a fin on the underside of the cars passes through the motors, adding extra propulsion. The motors are lined up in quick succession, therefore increasing the amount of energy fed to the reverse magnet, further increasing the speed. However, the speed is actually already predetermined based on the weight of the car and its riders. This is cleverly measured before reaching the hill, as the car sits on the turntable. The ride is said to have a launch of 40 miles per hour, although this may not always be the case. Depending on the weight, it's often a lot less forceful. The launch of this coaster section is said to play into our own tachophobia, or the fear of speed. As the car begins to enter the next room up the lift hill, we begin the initial slow climb. For riders versed in roller coasters, it would be safe to assume that this will be a standard chain lift, slowly bringing us up to the apex of the ride before the eventual drop. Instead, the ride subverts our expectations by launching us up the initial hill before sending us down the first drop. This change to the standard format breaks the mold for traditional coaster conventions, and has been previously used by Universal with The Incredible Hulk. It provides an experience you don't commonly get on a roller coaster, and makes for a thrilling beginning to the ride's climax. The remainder of the ride is said to play on our overall fear of death, our sonatophobia. The speeding coaster traverses several bank turns and small drops. Featured throughout this portion of the ride are 25 ghostly apparitions of skeletal mummies. These were originally hand-painted before being repainted using fluorescent colours. A low-level black light is used, quickly followed by a bright black light strobe and then a white light strobe. These altering lights cause an image burn-like effect, which leaves your own eyes deceptively projecting the haunting images onto the blank canvas of darkness all around you. It's an intense effect that adds to the psychological elements of this ride. It makes it difficult for riders to decipher which ones are actually real and which ones are just a trick of the eye based on the lighting effects. As the train eventually pulls back into the station, you are greeted by a member of staff telling you to stay in your seat from behind the glass in the control room above the train. Although this is a perfectly sequenced fake out, as it really isn't the conclusion of the ride at all. Imhotep appears from behind the ride attendant, smashing the glass and setting the ceiling on fire. This effect uses natural gas to trigger real flames in an effect known as brain fire. 
The gas is pumped in a certain way that allows the flames to be specifically controlled and contained to a certain area. This fake ending is sure to catch at least one new rider off guard, as the elaborate setup at first is very convincing. We are then told by Imhotep to prepare to forfeit our souls, and that death is only the beginning, again further implying that we are going to die, tapping into our primal fear of death. The train then lurches forward before we are swallowed whole by the ground, plummeting a reported 39 feet before whipping around a tight bank turn. A glowing Magi symbol is shown, and we hear a scream from Imhotep. In perfect circular fashion with the pre-show, we've been saved by the symbol and our souls are intact. Brendan Fraser welcomes us back and hopes that we had a good time. Of course, he would have enjoyed it more had he gotten his cup of coffee. Final thoughts. This ride was awarded Best Indoor Roller Coaster at the Golden Ticket Awards for several years running. Based on its consistent feature in the top spot, this category was eventually retired in 2019 and the ride was subsequently given legendary status instead. The industry celebrates it as one of the best attractions ever created. Although the marketing may have exaggerated some of its psychological claims, it's still an effective ride that is scarier than your average roller coaster. The fact that so much care and attention was given to the cinematic elements as well as the story and setting helps this attraction reach greater heights. Without the surrounding lore and design, this would be a very mediocre roller coaster. Revenge of the Mummy is an attraction that can only be described by our most overused phrase in this series, an experience. From its self-referential and meta backstory to the ominous and interactive walkthrough like Q-Line, elaborately themed and designed dark ride sets, as well as the intense and psychologically driven roller coaster, equipped with special effects and even a fake ending, these are just the building blocks that make up what is easily our favourite attraction at Universal Studios Florida and what makes Revenge of the Mummy a good ride. Let us know in the comments what ride you'd like to see us discuss next, and check out one of our other videos in this series which will be on screen now. We hope you enjoyed this installment of our What Makes This Ride So Good series. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like or press the subscribe button if you haven't already. It keeps us motivated in creating these weekly videos and helps a lot with our channel. Now you're ready.